It's a very exciting news week in War of the Visions with Seymour getting his EX job upgrade and Tetra Sylphid getting a three star awakening. But I've left the best news for last. We're getting King Mont on Wednesday. Finally. Sorry, one sec. Wait, he's not coming out on Wednesday? Sorry about that, my temper got away from me a little bit there. But now we have to move on to the video, and before we do that, I have to thank War of the Visions Calc.com for all the awesome info included in this video. Now we're going to talk about Seymour, who was a very cool MR when he came out, very powerful MR, but it was a harder time to pull on units back then. It was a harder time to build MRs up uh, and, you know, and, and so many good things coming on the horizon. But I do have high hopes for this EX job. So I'm going to put the stuff up here that you need to uh, unlock an EX job unit. Now the stuff here might look like, oh, those are Mont Soul Stones and that's a Rainbow Broadstone. Apply those to Seymour Shards and Seymour's Rarity and then you're going to get where you need to go. Uh, Anyway, if you have, if you need this, you can take a screenshot free of charge. So just a quick recap, because normally I just talk about the EX parts of these units, and and with Seymour, I kind of want to wanted to remind people about some of the cool stuff about his kit. So he gets 30 accuracy from his master ability. He has a pretty high attack stat even at 99. He's cost 50. I know that there's a lot of cost 50 MR units, but there's also a lot of cost 60 MR units. He gets move plus one on a thief passive. It also gives him agility, and he has great agility, so you can stack even more. And he also gets steel heart on the thief sub which is not something that most thieves get so there's a lot of applications here in pve there's a lot of applications in live pvp but there's also applications in regular like auto pvp and guild battle and all that as well because he is just a, a strong unit especially with his ex upgrades so the next thing to talk about are his stats, and we can see them right here, level 99. He had like pretty good attack, 310 for an MR unit back when he came out, super high crit rate, uh, and then 62 agility, which again for an MR is a super high agility. Everything else was, you know, so-so. When he gets up to 120, you know, he gets pretty respectable HP, at least for a DPS. His AP is still lacking, it's the thing that doesn't change, but the attack goes up to 548, which is still one of the highest uh, attacks in Japan right now. Not like the highest, but it's still up there. It's in like the top 10 or, or something around that number. Uh, and he actually does have two uh, attack boosting passes if you really wanted to augment that more. He doesn't have like a self-sacrifice, but I think he has a 25% and a 20%. Uh, and then he has his own VC, which we'll talk about in just a second here. His crit rate goes even higher, his dex, his luck, they're all good, and he even gets two more agility. So clearly there's some pretty big uh, buffs here. It definitely looks like a good stat increase for him. So his EX abilities, so you're probably wondering, you know, how good could these be? Well, the first one is the Oborozuki uh, skill, which was kind of like hit everybody around you, and you have a chance of inflicting slow on them, which is kind of cool. It's a skill that you don't see that often. Uh, and what they've done is they've actually increased the range, uh, and then they've also given a 25% chance to inflict disable. Now, I've been playing a lot with EX Liart, and you all know that if you've been watching my videos, and when you, she uses her, uh, like, shadow bind upgrade that allows you to put poison and uh, immobilize on somebody it's like there's there's just that extra chance that you're going to do another status effect and it feels really good um, slow is so powerful already and you all know that from Kane's limit burst uh, but disable is even more powerful than slow is so the chance to hit both of them that means that this is a skill that you really do want him to use and uh, to get him you know uh, surrounded by enemies it means you probably want to build him for evade because you want him to survive, uh, which is not a given that he'll survive, but more on that later. So his job level 22, uh, Blade Soul now gets an AP 20% uh, consumption uh, decrease. So less AP cost on his skills. That is a really powerful um, skill or bonus to have on an EX. And it allows you to, if you use bells or even if you just use whatever, you know, big TP skill, it means you can just do a bunch of skills in a row. This is really solid. And then at job level 25, he gets Dreaming Blade, which is a 26 AP, 165 mod, 25% uh, chance to inflict sleep for three turns for target. Uh, and that is kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good status effect. It's not the best one, but it's, it is really good. And it is something like that 
not that many people have a resistance to as far as I'm aware. Like right now, you know, Yuna and Garvel, it's hard to charm them. It's hard to like stop them. I, I'm, you know, they, I can't think of which one is which, uh, but they have like some really powerful resistances, but I can't think of whose resistance is sleep. So uh, maybe there's a, a niche there, but this also gives him a type of skill that he didn't have, uh, which is a cross AOE. Uh, it's an arranged as well. So it's going to get up to a four range if you can hit someone at that, that highest or furthest away spot. Um, and and it's, a, it's a fairly powerful skill and just more status effects. I really, I, I think like these status effect abilities are really powerful. And and we've seen that with Agrius in the past, um, that these can make a big difference. So I'm definitely liking this. And then if you go all the way to job level 25, you get 200 more HP and you get 8 attack, uh, which is accounted for in these graphics here. Now for all of you that have requested this, I've got the 99 and 120 stats right next to each other. You can pause the video and compare all you like uh, if you just want to get a snapshot of that. But we are actually going to compare him to other units, and the first one is O, and they're buddies in, in the game, uh, and they're EX buddies now, which is kind of cool, and they're both MR Samurais, so it's definitely a, a good comparison to make. And what you can see is that O is just more built for evade, uh, and then Seymour is more built for damage, but Seymour, he doesn't have bad agility, he doesn't have terrible luck, he has... Uh, evade skills on two subs so he definitely could be built evade for sure uh, and then the other thing that i want to point out here is just how big seymour's crit rate is uh, it's definitely something to you know account for with his damage and then we have rob our 120 ex samurai uh, and he actually has less attack than seymour but he has self-sacrifice uh, he has a bunch of extra you know skills that seymour doesn't get and he also has different damage types so you know i think Rob has a lot going on. He Rob's also like the second highest evade in the game. Um, so they're definitely just different units. You don't build Seymour to replace Rob. Um, but they are comparable because they're both EX Samurai. So definitely something you want to mention there. But they, they all have 64 agility. It's, it's a fast uh, group of Samurais. Okay, we'll also mention Swordsman's Refinement, which is the VC that will buff both O and Seymour. So if you get this, uh, you will get the 15% magic resist on Bestowed. Now, that is actually what uh, Seymour is weak to. He's weak 15% to magic, so this cancels that out. Uh, Seymour's also weak 15% to Pierce, and he has no uh, projectile or slash resistances. So Seymour is going to die easily even though he has okay HP because he just doesn't have good resists. The only positive resist he has is 15% strike resist, which is good in some scenarios, but it's it's still like not the majority of damage. So I think with this card, it goes a long way to dealing with that magic damage, but this also gives uh, him something that he is missing on his kit, which is uh, some defense penetration. He really needs that and he gets 50% attack. So with this card, you're going to find your Seymour and or O doing some serious damage, getting some defense penetration, and then getting some much needed magic resistance. I still think that you need someone to detract from, you know, Seymour getting hit. Although at the same time, if you really could build and evade Seymour and have him surrounded, and then he could strike back with that Oboro Zuki, whatever it's called skill, then that's pretty cool too. Uh, so this is definitely a card that would be pretty important for him if you're trying to make him truly competitive, uh, but I don't think it's at all necessary if you're just going to use him uh, for some of the other game modes and not like, you know, your auto PvP. I even think that he'll be fine and he's going to be great in manual PvP with any sort of cost limited uh, content. So the question is now, should you EX this Samurai? And I think you should, uh, but I do think that you should, you know, don't rush it. Uh, don't spend any Vizior on him unless you are a fan, unless you are going to be uh, building him up and using him for uh, any sort of content right away and you you, were, you want to do that. Uh, but otherwise, if he's somebody that you can EX over time, uh, you have a bunch of, you know, MR Mog Medals and you can spend them on his shards. I don't know if his shards are in the shop, but if they are, uh, then yeah, you could buy up a bunch of his shards and you could EX him. And I think he's going to be a really strong EX unit. He's probably going to carry you in the fire selection quests whenever those come out. So definitely uh, something, so, uh, a unit that I myself will want to EX at some point. So uh, definitely a fan of him. All right, we need to quickly talk about the Tetrasilphid uh, three star awakening and it's a pretty good one um, the, the big thing here with the stats is the the increase in HP is significant like an extra 400 HP is really good and then also agility is significant so one more agility is very nice even even just one 
it's awesome. Uh, and then otherwise added panels, the big ones to look at here, wind attack up, obviously, if you're building Lucia with the missile attack and then wind attack up, you could go really powerful. Uh, you could also do evasion rate and quite a bit of it, uh, and even uh, some accuracy, and I think that those are all really good nodes. So there's a lot of ways to build Tetrasilphid. You can also give it to people as an agility esper. It doesn't have the best attack around. Uh, it's actually more like a split with magic, so you could give this to a magic user to make them evade, to make them accurate, to make them uh, wind attack up. You could even give this to, let's say, Howlet, although there are better espers for him. Uh, but the main thing that, that you get out of these three-star espers, besides, you know, the HP, the agility, is the fact that you can just even take more nodes that the espers already have uh, if they don't get good upgrade nodes. But Tetrasilph has got some good upgrade nodes. They also get these status ailment resists, and Tetrasilph got disabled, which is probably one of the best ones you could possibly get, and this is definitely another uh, consideration to have, especially if there's a big disable meta, you're going to want to have this. So that's going to be it for the video, but we're going to quickly mention some of the upcoming EX units. So the next wave, I'm hoping, I mean I got it wrong last time, but should be the Yerma, Nesha, and the Etra wave. Now Nesha is actually kind of an interesting tank, there's some videos on YouTube of her, you can go check those out, uh, and Yerma is actually pretty interesting too, but I'm, I'm not going going to EX her, I don't even have her maxed. Uh, and then after that, we're hoping to get Ayaka, uh, Frederica, and then Murmur. Uh, and I actually like all three of these. Um, Frederica is pretty cool. She gets some defense penetration and she gets some uh, missile resist penetration, but it's actually going to be on a, a gunner skill. So the, you know, the, the ability to use that on auto is going to be really interesting. Although uh, if you can use it, it's going to be very powerful. And then Ayaka gets some like really cool supporting skills, some, uh, some new heal uh, abilities, but also uh, some AP restoration abilities and I'm actually kind of interested in her it reminded me of like when you're looking at like you know the Final Fantasy 14 expansion you're at oh, what's white mage gonna get this time uh, and you're trying to think like they can't just give them more heals uh, so she did get some interesting stuff I'm personally excited about it I know I've heard some people cool on it uh, but I'm excited to make that video as soon as we get news on when that's happening uh, and that's gonna be it so let me know if you enjoyed the video uh, if it was helpful to you uh, and then otherwise I'll see you guys all in the comments and I'll see you all next video.